Okay, here we have a question from Isabel asking uh, how to solve this problem here, which says that a total of $3,000 is invested, part at 2% simple interest, and part at 4%. I guess you can assume there that the 4% the is also a simple interest. The question is, if the total annual return from the two investments is $100, how much invest is invested at each rate? Let's go over that. So the first thing I will do is break down what's happening in this problem. We're told that the principal, which is the amount you're investing initially, is equal to $3,000. And we're told that after your investment, what you actually got on your return was $100 in interest. And we know that somehow all of this money was split up. And it was split up in two ways, right? Some, some of it was split up to 2% interest, some amount, and some amount was split up to 4% interest. When you add those two amounts of interest up, you should get $100 in the end of the cycle. So the question is, how much was invested at 2% and how much was invested at 4%? Well, I think before you really get too into all of your equations for principal and simple interest and all of these things, let's just clarify that simple interest, all it does is it adds the, a percentage onto your initial investment. So as a simple example, like I've done in other videos, if you have $100, right, with 30% simple interest. Well, that means that after one year, and let's say this compounds every year, compounding meaning that every year that's how often you apply this interest, after one year you have your $100, your initial investment, plus 30% of the principal of the initial investment. And this is how simple interest works. Because now what's going to happen is you'll have $130. After two years, you just add another 30% on your principal, right, after two years. So another 30% on 100, and you would get not 130, but 160. This is the basic idea of simple interest. But we don't need to get into too many of the formulas for that, because I, I think this problem can just be solved um, in a simple algebraic expression. So here's how I think about it. I know that, that there's been $3,000 invested so let's pretend that, that this circle here is representing all the money we invested, all 3000 Intuitively, I know that some amount, right, maybe this right here, was invested at 2%. We don't know. Maybe it was less than the 4%. But I'm just going to cut this up to get a picture in my head. So let's say this little piece right here is how much was invested at 2%. What does that mean? Well, if all of this is taken up by the 2%, that means the rest of the money would have to be invested at 4%, right? The rest of this here will be invested at 4%. So how does it help us? Well, let's say that the amount of money that's invested at 2% is X, right? This is equal to the money invested at 2%. We don't know how much. But what it does tell us is if this whole bubble here is $3,000, and this chunk is 2%. If the rest is at 4%, I can say that the rest, that all this stuff in here, is just your total, your 3000 right? All the money you invested, minus the amount that was invested at 2%. And this is how much money was invested at 4%. And just to clarify, what I'm saying is, if all $3,000 is what you invested, and you take away this piece right here, right, what remains is all the money invested at 4%. And that's what we're saying here. You take all the money, 3000 take away X, which is the amount invested at 2%, and what's left over is the money invested at 4%. And now we're ready for an equation. And this is exciting because we only have one variable to deal with. What do we do? Well, what I would say is that you have some amount at 2%. So that means point, right, 0.02x. 
So 2% times some amount of money plus 4% times the rest of the money, 3,000 minus x. If you add up the 4% on some amount of money and the 2% on some other amount of money, what happens? Well, we get $100 in interest, right? And I'll just write 100 here. So now we have this simple equation, right? 2% times some amount of money and 4% times the rest of the money we had add them up, we should get $100. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing I want to do is, is try and simplify a little bit here by multiplying 0.04 right, times 3,000 and negative x. That's the distributive property in action. So how do we do that? What's 4% of, of 3,000? Seems difficult, right? But what I would do in my head is 3,000 divided by 100. That would give me 1% which gives me, well, what's 3,000 divided by 100? Well, that's just 30. So that means that 4% is 4 times that 1%, and it's 120. Right? 120 will actually equal 4%. And all, all the reason is because 30 is 1%. If to find 4%, that's 4 times more than 1%. So when I multiply 0 0.04 by 3,000, that's just 120. And then 0 0.04 times minus x is minus 0.04x. This equals 100 when we add it to 0.02x. And now we can keep going. I'm going to simplify. I'm going to subtract 120 from both sides. And, and let me just clear this off a little bit. So we have right now 0.02x plus 120 minus 0.04x equals 100. So I'm going to subtract 120 from both sides. This, this will help me. And what I'll get is 0.02x minus 0.04x equals negative 20. And you might get nervous here because you know, you're know you looking at money and all of a sudden it looks like you invested a negative amount, but we shouldn't worry because here 0.02 minus 0.04 will give you a negative number, right? That's what we're getting here because you start at 0.02 and you take you take 0.04 away. You take away more than you started with. What will this equal? Well, this will equal negative 0.02x. And that equals negative 20. To solve for x, we can divide both sides by 0.02. Excuse me, negative 0.02. Here, this is 1. And here, before we even solve it, we realize now it will be positive because you have a negative divided by a negative. And that's a positive. And here, how do we do this? Well, remember that, that 0.02 is really 2 out of 100. So I think of this as, right, I'm going to convert this to a positive, 20 divided by 2 over 100. Right, that's 2%. And to divide by a fraction, I multiply. So 20 times 100 over 2. What's that? Well, that's equal to 2,000 over 2. Dividing here, because 2,000 over 2 means 2,000 divided by 2, and that equals 1,000. So here, our, our number right now is 1,000. But what does that represent? Well, we just solved for x. And x is the amount of money. This is x. Right? This is the money invested at 2%. We still want to know <coughs> how much was invested at 4%. Well, if there was $3,000 and you used 1,000 of it to invest at 2%, the other 2,000, right, 3,000 minus the 1,000 you invested at 2% gives you the remaining amount of money that must have been invested, right, at 4%. So now we kind of have two answers going here so far, right? We know how much was invested at 2% and how much was invested at 4%. But with a problem like this, it's especially important to actually check your work. So the question is, is 2% of 1,000 plus 4% of 2,000, right? In other words, if you took the simple interest of 2% on this much money that you have and this simple interest on the rest of the money, and add them up, you should get the $100 interest that they mentioned. 
So let's just check that. What is 2% of 1,000? Well, again, divide by 100 to get 1%, and that's just 10, right? So 2% is 20. Here, 4% of 2,000. Well, I'm going to use my same technique. Divide by 100 to get 1%, and that's 20. 4% would be then 4 times that, or 80. And notice, if you add 40 and 80, you would get a total of $100 in simple interest. So that's the way I would solve this problem, um, although I'm curious if anyone has other ways. Thanks.